Hello everyone, this is Isaac from Compositional IT. Today we're going to be looking at migrating our code that we looked at in the previous video from a script into an ASP.NET Web API where we can hit an API and ask for the list of all countries and then also provide details on a single country specified by the root. So there are a number of different steps we need to do to make this happen. So the first thing we have to do is create a web application. And then the next thing we have to do is to port our code from the script into that web app. And then we need to start adding some endpoints to surface the data. With that being said, let's get started. I'm going to start by creating a console application in a folder I've called source server. I'm going to use standard.net tooling for this, so .NET new console, lang f -sharp. Once I've created the console application, I'm going to add the Saturn NuGet package to it, again using packets VS Code add-in. For those of you who don't know, Saturn is an f -sharp wrapper around ASP.NET Core. So we get all the benefits of ASP.NET Core, but in a nice f -sharp SDK. To create a Saturn application, I create an application block. I'm going to specify no routings at the moment and then run my application. I'm also going to use .NET Watch Run so that changes I make over the course of this demo are automatically cascaded. The next thing I'm going to do is incorporate the script file from last time into this project as a module. So I'm literally going to move the FSX file into the folder and rename it to api.fs. Next, I'm going to add the APIFS file to the server fsproj file. And lastly, I'm going to reorder the files in the project so that API is declared before program fs. The program must always be the last file in the project. Now I'm just going to perform some rudimentary cleanup of the file. So I'm removing the hash load, the fsi add printer, and the make scatter and top 10 functions, which we don't need for our API that we're going to design. One thing that I need to add to the project is F -sharp data, which is used in the module, but isn't yet added to the project. So I'm just going to use packet again to do that. Now I'm going to give the module a name, which is API. And now I'm going to fix the CSV provider. We're getting an error because the path is incorrect. That's because we've moved this file two levels down from where it was originally. So I'm just going to amend the path to fix that and do the same in the get files call. I'm now going to perform an optional optimization, which is to switch from the use of sequences to the use of arrays. There are a few reasons for this. Firstly, sequences are not only lazy, but they do not cache the results. In other words, every time we'd access a value in the API, it would recalculate the entire data set. Secondly, arrays are a little bit more performant than sequences as well. So whilst for scripts, sequences worked out quite nicely, for a web application, we might wish to switch to arrays to get the best performance possible. Now that our code is compiling, the next step is to actually start to tie in the API to our ASP.NET application and actually surface the data. So I'm going to start by creating a get root called API slash countries. The data served up will be the value of daily, which is an array of tuples where the first element in the tuple is a string, that is the country name, and the second element of the tuple is an array of values which represent the data per day. So in fact, that's also a tuple of date, time, and int. But we just want to return the first element, the country name. So I'm going to map just the first element. And then lastly, I'm going to surface that array of strings as an HTTP response as JSON. So the JSON function here is actually a giraffe helper function. And this function will wrap the array of strings, or indeed any .NET object, into an HTTP response with a 200, the content type set correctly, and so on and so forth. The next step is to plug in our API routes into the application through the use router keyword. Now that's done, 
I'm going to actually test out our endpoint by typing the URL as a comment so that I don't break the build and then using the REST client extension for VS Code to actually call the API and show the results within code. So that's our first route done. The next route we're going to create will take in a country's name and return back the statistics for that country. I'm going to start by creating two simple values. The first is a lookup or a map that will take us from a country's name to its values. And the second will be the list of all the country's names as strings. We'll use this to replace the existing code we have in the main router file. Next, I'm going to create our second root, which will be parameterized by a string. And we'll pass that string into the lookup, where we'll try and find the country name and then return the entire result as JSON. So here are our results. The first thing you'll probably notice though is that the return JSON looks a little unusual. We have a case field and fields and item one and item two. This is caused by the way that the default serializer in ASP.NET Core, in this case Newtonsoft JSON, returns back F sharp tuples and maps and options. So what we're going to do is replace that serializer with one that fits a bit better with F sharp called Thoth. Now when I rerun this query using the new serializer, you'll see that the JSON that's emitted is a lot more lightweight and looks a lot more typical for what you might expect in a JSON message. I'd like now to talk a little bit about mapping from concepts like f -sharp options to HTTP messages. In the current version, if we enter an invalid country, you'll see that we return a null object and still return a 200 code for the HTTP response. I'd like to change this so that we return a 404 not found with the actual country name that's missing in the body. Although I could continue with the inlining approach that I've taken above, at this point I'm going to create a dedicated function for this route. It's going to do the same as the current implementation, except I'm going to do it with an explicit match expression. So I'm going to do a try find for the supplied country against the lookup. If the country exists and the stats are returned, then I'm going to convert those stats into JSON. But if we don't get anything back, then I'm going to use a giraffe helper function, which will return a 404 not found with the supplied string message. Now, if I hit the root of an unknown country, you'll see that we get a 404 back with an appropriate text message in the body. I'd like to finish by showing you a nice trick that you can use with anonymous records, which were introduced relatively recently in F -sharp. So I can convert from our tuples of date times and confirmed counts into a named anonymous record, which renders much more appropriately in JSON. Observe how I don't have to actually change the function signatures, the return types or anything like that. Instead, F -sharp and Giraffe and Saturn simply figure it out for us. As you can see, the F -sharp anonymous records map one-to-one -to, -one to JSON objects. We can also elect to do the same conversion from tuples to anonymous records, but at the API level rather than at the router level. Thanks to the type inference in F -sharp, we don't have to actually make any other changes in terms of type signatures because the compiler figures it out for us. So that was about it. Um, I hope you found that session useful. Please do subscribe because we're going to continue to evolve the solution. So in the next episode, we might like to actually serve a website with some links and an actual table and some charting. And um, we're going to do that using server side code. So if you're coming from a .NET C sharp background, something akin to ASP.NET MVC, but not quite the same. And then potentially in the final video, we will look to move this to a single page application with F sharp in the browser.
using Fable and, and ultimately a safe st style application. Hope you enjoyed this and please do leave any questions in the comments. As always, I'm delighted to answer any questions that you have. So thank you very much and have fun. Take care.